The establishment's paleontology group cautiously clears a wrap of land in southwest Britain, realizing the region they're looking freely ultimately become a skate park. As they filter through the soil, they understand they've gone with the ideal decision in investigating the region preceding development beginning. They found something that rejuvenates the old entombment ceremonies of civic establishments from one thousands of years prior. At the point when archaeologists dug underneath the skate park, they uncovered proof old enough old entombment customs. But before we get started, hit that subscribe button and become a part of our community of like-minded individuals who love history facts. Let's get started. Specialists have long realized that underneath the outer layer of its territories, the UK has antiquated stories to tell. The Bronze Age began the English Isles over quite a while back. As a matter of fact, mainland Europeans showed up with their abilities in bronze creating, and with them, they carried their old customs and ceremonies to specialists, have found out pretty much each of this through cautious unearthings of Bronze Age destinations across the UK. In any case, during the Lechlade dig, they didn't reveal a generally common remainder of the country's old past. All things being equal, they tracked down proof to detail the civilization's entombment ceremonies, and it was a chilling revelation most definitely. Europe's passage into the Bronze Age came around 100 years after the period, started in 3300 BCE in antiquated Sumerian, which is situated in what today we call the Center East. The time frame started when individuals began to jettison their stone apparatuses and weapons for those made of bronze. England had a lot of the natural substances expected for the stepping stool material, which is contained nine-tenths, copper, and 110 tin. Europe's Bronze Age began the landmass, those explicitly in Greece and 3200 BCE. For sure, it required around 1200 years for the blunders headways to advance toward the English Isles. Furthermore, proof has shown that it was Europeans who carried their novel devices with them when they ventured out to the UK. Old graves have demonstrated that another populace showed up in the UK so as to carry Bronze Age progressions to the islands. Specialists have found contrasts in the skull states of skeletons from the Stone Age and those dated to the Bronze Period. Thusly, they can conclude that new individuals and new reasoning travel to England between the double cross periods. As a matter of fact, proof has come to show that one specific gathering of Bronze Age individuals showed up and displaced the home of England who'd strolled before them. Subsequent to breaking down many old human bones, an exploration group from the UK Public History Gallery found that the country's Stone Age occupants for the most part vanished once the container individuals showed up. Research pioneer Ian Barnes made sense of by means of the Exhibition Hall's site in 2018, exactly how he and the group had reached such a resolution. We found that the skeletal remaining parts of people from England who lived soon after the Bronze Age have a totally different DNA profile to the individuals who preceded, he said. It appears to be that there is a huge populist turnover. As per the regular History Gallery's DNA study, the fresh introductions appear to be unique to the island Stone Age occupants to these previous inhabitants, commonly had dull eyes and hair, for instance, and Oliver Stone tissue. Interestingly, England's new populace had blue eyes, paler tissue, and light locks. These qualities were progressively predominant among the English Isle's inhabitants. Additionally, the containers experienced no difficulty blending with the populaces they experienced even the ones they came to supplant. In England, obviously the measuring utensils joyfully coincided with individuals who were at that point living on the islands. For instance, the previous made upgrades to Stonehenge and 1500 BCE, a significant sanctuary built during the Neolithic time frame nearly 1500 years sooner. They likewise stacked up earth to make a look at Silbury Slope, and they developed a stone landmark at Amesbury to the measuring glass people group's presence changed England's early society with the beginning of the progress that since been called West X culture. It spun around their interment locales, which they loaded up with important things of the time. Archaeologists have tracked down everything from gold trimmings to fight tomahawks and complicatedly embellished blades. 
and keeping in mind that unearthing these cards, these things don't simply show the Bronze Age people group's capacity to make modern antiques. A portion of the safeguarded pieces show that they probably had exchanging roots with other prospering developments of the period. For example, some of the covered gold vessels connected the West X culture to the Greek populace, who produced very much like cups during a similar time span. On that note, the primary Bronze Age entombment site to contain gold was the last resting spot of the supposed Emesbury Bauman. Archaeologists unearthed the remaining parts in front of the development of a private home, and their dig occurred only a couple of miles from Stonehenge, which is the reason I called the disclosure the ruler of Stonehenge to the group from Wessex. Prehistoric studies uncovered the entombment site in the late spring of 2002, and they found roughly 100 items concealed inside the earth. Among these were gold strands of hair and number of pointed stones, a few pots, and a few blades made of copper. Be that as it may, may be generally surprising, was the Amosbury Toxophilate himself a total skeleton of somebody who kicked the bucket over a long time back? The Amosbury Toxophilate burial place was likewise essential, since it contained fundamentally more Bronze Age things that archaeologists would commonly track down in such a cart. Additionally, the gold held inside the grave was from around 2500 BC, making it the most seasoned ever leftover made of the material that specialists had uncovered in the UK. Further tests uncovered more about the man covered right beyond Stonehenge. The Amesbury Bowman had likely lived to be roughly 40 years of age. Had endured wounds to his mouth and knee, the last option of which probably left him in close to perpetual distress, and by looking at his teeth, specialists could discover that had come to England from focal Europe. Very much like different containers, the Amesbury Bowman is noteworthy cemetery and rich foundation have persuaded specialists to think that he was an individual from the decision class during the Bronze period. He might try and have taken part in building Stonehenge as well. Albeit the actual site was set apart during the Stone Age, the incredibly popular stone circle showed up around 700-100 years after the fact, then all the Amosbury Toxophilid grave was at the time the greatest at any point Bronze Age, find the nation had at any point seen. The sheer measure of ancient rarities there intrigued archaeologists, as did the importance behind them. They conjectured that the Lord of Stonehenge had such a great amount in his grave since individuals of his time felt that he'd need such devices and fortunes during existence in the wake of death. From that point forward, more proof has become exposed that reveals further insight into the idea of Bronze Age interment customs. The body being referred to lay in a profound and slender pit. Inside specialists from establishments prehistoric studies tracked down the remaining parts of a grown-up male laying on his left side in a slouched position. Encompassing the skeleton, they found a large number of curios similarly as archaeologists had with the Amosbury Bowman. Yet this monitor's cache, including one rather frightful incorporation showed exactly that he meant a lot to the local area that covered him. Regularly, the receptacle individuals would enter collections of their tip-top close to a floor covering like cow -eyed. The lecklaid man, notwithstanding, had four of them and the cattle's feet got into his entombment site establishment's archaeology's Andy, who had said the group accepted this as a sign that he probably outclassed the other people who were covered with a lone conceal in their graves. All past models here in the UK have been single cow's entombments. So the Lechlade entombment is one of a kind in such manner hood, made sense of for life science in 2020. What's more, he hypothesized the vault of the creatures might have passed on for the tribal leader's farewell. He said, there's an opportunity that these creatures were butchered as a feature of a function connected with the internment. The measuring utensils had likewise covered this man remembered to have been accomplished and with other important things from his period. For example, they put a stone wristband and a metal blade in the grave with him to hood at it. It's a seriously huge speculation of abundance to go into the ground. In any case, for these provisions and contributions, one significant part was missing from the tribal leader's grave. Container entombments would in general consolidate their unique pot. However, there was one with the skeleton. 
We believe that this individual was a venerated expert inside measuring utensil society, who had said someone who was related with the immediate imagery connected to the container pot itself, receptacle pot or not. The establishment's prehistoric studies group actually had a lot to unload of the Lechlade site. They had more to uncover than only a tribal leader encompassed by wealth all things considered. Inside a similar entombment circle, they found one more man buried in a situated position. His closeness to the boss brought up many issues. The specialists could conclude that the man had been something like 50 years of age at the hour of his passing. Taking into account this, they trusted him to have been a strict authority or the like, as others with an otherworldly job have been covered similarly during the Bronze Age. One of the secrets is, what was the connection between those two men put made sense of? On the grounds that the Asum had Shaman was let go close to the clan leader, the specialists accepted that the men might have shared a cozy relationship. Others, nonetheless, hypothesized that the priest had just been covered close by the pioneer, he might have been forfeited. Hood brought up that these speculations weren't fundamentally supported by what the group had tracked down in the graves. However, the possibility of him being a shaman was proposed by a few English papers, he expressed, yet there is no proof that he was forfeited. In any case, he additionally said the hypothesis was fundamentally unrealistic either. However, the archaeologists might well always be unable to decide the shaman's reason for death. One way or the other, it's not provable in light of the fact that the upper portion of the remaining parts has been slashed away by a furrow who'd made sense of. Still, he brought up that penance was a particular chance, in spite of the fact that it would presumably never move farther than being a speculation. Put added that the Thought Shaman Situated Act raised issues on the grounds that it's so unprecedented. He was covered in a strange situated position. The archaeologist said his legs were available broadening downwards towards the foundation of his grave pit. We haven't tracked down an immediate equal somewhere else in Bronze Age England. What the archaeologists can say without a doubt is that the site was significant for basically a thousand years before the clan leaders and shamans' interments. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a thing.